African history is generally seen through the image of a starving child and brutal civil war. It's been known as the Dark Continent, a gross oversimplification. What insight can a poll have into this rich and varied place? Does Africa confirm our prejudices or subvert them? Join me, Jan Darash, on how we got here. The concept of colonialism has long accompanied humankind. Although we associate colonialist policies primarily with British, French and German empires, it was already back in antiquity that Greece first began establishing settlements in the Mediterranean and Black Sea regions. Ancient Rome could likewise be conceived as a colonial power. The phenomenon exploded in scope and reached a peak in the late 19th century when the United Kingdom established itself as the largest colonial power with about a quarter of the globe under the crown's rule. Colonialism wasn't just limited to the exploitation of natural resources and the native populations of Africa and Asia. Today, Europe and the world still bears the burden of colonialism. Former colonial powers are making efforts to offer redress for decades of extractive conquest, and everyone understands that reconciliation is needed more than ever. While the colonial empires of yesterday are trying to make up for the damage, the scale of those efforts is still essentially symbolic. Reconciliation and forgiveness are particularly important in the context of today's geopolitics, as China, with its nearly unlimited capital, has already stepped in to replace Britain, France and Portugal. According to the Boston University Global Development Policy Center, it is estimated that between year 2000 and 2022, over 1,200 Chinese lenders provided 49 African governments and numerous regional institutions with over $100 billion in loans. I'm delighted to welcome today as our guest Marek Zhukowski, an experienced diplomat with a vast Eastern European and African experience. So welcome to the programme. Welcome, thanks so much for the invitation. Yeah. It's a great, great pleasure to have you. Um, first of all, uh, we're going to talk about the, your uh, African uh, posting uh, today. Um, what was your, what you were posted to Kenya uh, and what was your initial uh, attitude, feelings, thoughts about the country when you were, when you were posted there? It was about 2000 and 12, wasn't it? And that time it was uh, 2012. It was a, a specific uh, diplomatic uh, goal behind, uh, be diplomatic uh, agenda behind this, because sending me and the other colleagues to African countries, because the Polish government at that time declared a special program going Africa. It was the set of uh, uh, Polish both politicians, including prime minister, and, and, and especially businessmen visits to, to Africa. And we as a diplomat uh, were instructed to be in assistance of this movement. It was something new in, in Polish diplomacy, in Polish politics, and really it was something like to define a Polish agenda and Polish goals in uh, countries which uh, didn't know Poland almost at all before. And uh, was this a successful initiative? Was it primarily a business initiative? Or, as you just mentioned, uh, a kind of cultural awareness? Uh, uh, mainly, mainly economic agenda. Uh, it was uh, pre prevailing in this but also cultural ties, but mainly economically. I could say uh, in the terms of uh, agreements and uh, having in mind the scale of our possible engagement, it was more or less success successful. The amount of uh, agreements are Polish no, small investment or, or, or ties, economic ties, uh, has increased uh, substantially uh, for this uh, last five or uh, 15 years, uh, comparing with this uh, first 90 till 2010, something like that. Also, uh, I could say that it was in our scale, of course, uh, in our possibility in the scale of possibility of, of Polish engagement uh, yeah. to, to, to new for us uh, continent. It was uh, something like breakthrough. 
Uh, myself, so as, a, as a representative of government, uh, I finalized my my staying in Kenya, signing two big agreements on uh, Taitai to both with Tanzania and Kenya for every every for 100 million of euro. So it was something that's quite considerable. It was something like that, yeah. These places, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, they're former British colonies, as you, as you yeah. rightly pointed out. Um, is are these places in a kind of uh, no man's land between? Uh, a British colonial experience, history. They uh, obtained independence in the 1960s. And now, uh, would it be correct in saying that they, there's a new scramble for Africa or, or a neo-colonial movement from China and other places like that? How do you, how yeah. would you d uh, define the, the yeah, yeah. mood of the country? The scramble for Africa after uh, this... Uh, independence movement in 60s, 50s, really. It was <clears throat> the case both of uh, post-colonial countries like French or, or the Netherlands or, 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 or uh, Great Britain, uh, but also China, like you said. Chinese started from trying to, to export to these African countries Maoist uh, ideas, but yes, it failed. It's right, it's there. But uh, of course now they are more successful in uh, and the, the other type of dominance uh, by investment, by investment in uh, infrastructure, uh, in, in digital uh, sphere. They are, they, they are really modern type of uh, investment. It's not only uh, simple goods, uh, and buying only because of a uh, uh, smaller price than, than the Western one. Well, you mentioned the, uh, the, the export of revolution, which failed, but they tried to export it in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Um, so countries like China and perhaps Russia with the Wagner Group over in, in the West of Africa, uh, do they offer an ideological um, alternative to the West? Or is this simply, as you said, um, a, a, a business opportunity, investment, money? Uh, in the terms of uh, soft power, it's uh, on the, the case of China, it's more sophisticated and complicated. There are both cultural or ideological setup of Confucianist Institute dealing with uh, promotion of Chinese culture, something like that. And uh, the second part is economic uh, engagement, both loans, investment. It's uh, also, it's, uh, it's really developed agenda. On the Russian case, Russia, it's, uh, it's, it's in the scale of engagement and the possibilities including economic. It's, 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 a, it's a small partner for, for, for Africa. Uh, for also, I try not to over-exaggerate the, the, the role, of, all, role of Russia. Yes. Of course, we see the, 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 this uh, terrorist group, Wagner activity in, 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 in Africa, although we saw now, it's almost uh, out of the agenda because after after this dissolution or degradation of this group uh, by Russian itself yeah, in Russia, uh, the activity of, of Wagner Group it's I think it's the, it's more the part of, of of history than the really threat. And after defining finally the Wagner Group as a terrorist group, the their activity the, the possibility of activity is really minimal. You mentioned when uh, we were talking uh, yesterday evening about uh, Kenya, the uh, the president of the British. Uh, uh, it, would it be true to say that they okay they they kicked the British out in 1960 yeah, yeah. or whatever, um, but the the vested interests is, are still there. Are they strong? Are they a competitor against China? Uh, were they able to um, be competitive against the the, the Polish initiative that, that you? Uh, were part of. How do you see the, the British presence? Uh, yeah, thanks so much. I think it's uh, it's really interesting because 
it's uh, of course uh, we should realize this like we we are for hundreds of years a neighbor of Belarus on the on Ukraine on also Germany also there is a part of our memory the relation with this uh, with these countries with these societies so also for British uh, people for British from the perspective on, of empire the 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 the, the Kenya uh, Kenya as a country as a society is a part of British memory pa also romantic should, view yeah romantic oh, absolutely we should re realize this with uh, full sympathy I could say why not but of course not uh, not reminding maybe so so much this uh, colonial order they pushed uh, on Kenya and other countries, but still it's, uh, it's a part of uh, even this, uh, the, this romantic, uh, uh, romantic memory. Of course, Commonwealth is, 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 is not so strong like it was 50 years ago, but uh, British try to be uh, present in more or less justice way in, in Kenya, I could say this in this way, but uh, for Kenyan, it's a really, assets because they are f you know, fluently English. Yes. It's really the asset in comparison with the other countries when English is not so fully present like in Kenya. Uh, the uh, legal tradition is a, it's a really British one also. Uh, they Africans, Kenyans are fascinating with primary league on every bus, there is the, the brand of uh, Manchester or to Tottenham, something like that. Uh, still, there are many uh, typical, I could say, colonial heritage in, uh, in, 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 in Kenya, respecting by, 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 by Kenyans. Uh, for example, in Nairobi, in the capital of, of Kenya, there is a one of the main colonial club uh, for, for now for expat and, uh, and for, for Kenyans, still in the same shape, uh, in, the, it's in the Motaiga country club. Uh, but uh, Kenyans are allowed to function like it was before, 100 years ago, for example, but with a Kenyan president. Yes. So it's a I mean, it, does this mean that the, 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 there's a more of an equal relationship between the white man and, and the black man? How do you, is it, or is it still more formally, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a colonial and... Formally, if an expat wants to, uh, to be a Kenyan citizen, it's allowed. Uh, and uh, Kenya, as I, as, I, as I remember, in the East Africa, in this region, is a hub for expats, for, for, for British, Americans, the, the other people trying to, to, to have a business or, or, or uh, live in Africa, yes. but Kenya, it's, it's because of the weather, because Nairobi, it's so high on the, uh, uh, over the, the, the sea that there is no malaria and so on. It's, it's really attractive place in East Africa. You've, you've had a, uh, we need to unfortunately wind up our d discussion, so one last question to you. Um, you, you've, you came into Kenya as a Pole, as a, as a member of a, a country that was part of an empire, not as, as an empire. Yeah. Um, how do you view the idea of empire? The British Empire has had a a very bad press recently is the, the anti-colonial repression and the, the, all the stuff in India has been stressed rather more than the, the benefits. Is it, is it possible to say, to, to come to a, a balanced view of empire as a, as a concept? Uh, I study the, 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 the case of empire, not only as a, as a concept, it, uh, for me it was not the British or, or, or Rome, but uh, mainly Russian. Yes. And uh, it was the case, and still it's the, the, the case. Also, I had the experience to, uh, to, to, to uh, study and uh, partly practice what does it mean that the, the empire power, the empire influence on the others uh, in the case of Russia. But uh, 
I could see from this perspective that, of course, uh, now we see the typical uh, revisionist empire uh, movement in Russia. But uh, co comparing to this, as an analogy, of course, comparing to this uh, British uh, uh, attempt to be in Kenya, it's not, uh, it's not empire. It's, uh, I could say, frankly, it's a, it's a way of partnership and cooperation. It's, it's, it's something they did. Yeah. Um, we could go on for uh, a, long, a lot longer, but uh, Marek Zhukovsky, thank you very much for Thanks so much. joining us on the programme. Thanks so much a lot. Yeah. And that's all we have time for today, so join us next time on How We Got Here.